Oh, and I, when you guys are in Chinatown, yeah. that's good. More and food. he's like sitting there just whooping that food and he's like, the whole scene, yeah. what, uh, whatever you want. There's these food. I mean, like, oh, okay, we have a. <laughs> <laughs> this is bad. This is sounds really bad. very, very bad. The food is it. taking Get over. Get the tower of duck. Bring the tower of duck. <laughs> um, there was one shot that I thought was really interesting, and you cut to when the detective goes to Toledo. There's a shot of the hotel, and it superimposed over it is the American flag. I was wondering if this film, if consciously, of American culture and our totally a bread question, but totally a bread question. And then, and what, what did he say? It's his love letter to America. It is. That's pretty much what <laughs> <I> said. <laughs> <laughs> it's his love letter to America. So. And Brett, if for those, those of you who aren't already Brett fans, he Brett fans. He grew up in Little America, as did I. He grew he grew up, up in Toledo, in, Ohio. Yeah. On Middlesex uh, Drive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, so for him, after having been away <laughs> and having made the film in Australia, which is where we all met. He uh, had come back and then gone away again. And he just sort of felt like he just saw the place differently. And then after the boys told him, you know, this story, he just felt like, oh, I'm going to put it as a stamp on it that's different than just about a feeder gainer. He wanted to make a thriller and he wanted to have the subtext, which is the Christian being the American flag, and a lot of other hidden things that are all Brett signature pieces. I think just, I mean, the main thing about this picture is the, 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 the catchphrase to this film and also the catchphrase to my character is consumption is evolution. And that's the thing, okay, like that monologue that Michael says when he's standing over Philip in the hotel room is sort of something that I think we came up with when we were writing the treatment. But that's the main thing, you know. And that was his underlying thing. It's his underlying thing, you know, that this world, we're just eating ourselves into, you know, the planet's fucked. We're all fat and we're all going to die. And, uh, you know, I mean. And not in a physical sense, but in a consuming the world, consuming the environment, consuming. And so all those moments through the film that are quite obvious that speak for that, you know, are breaks and snaps. Yes? Have you shown this film to any people that you know are members of that feeder game? Um, interesting you should say that. Um, and what was their reaction? Uh, yes, there have been people a part of that subculture. I always get emails. Uh, we've, fil we've been in several film festivals around the world. This is the first in the U.S. Uh, but the people who have seen it in Europe uh, originally were very skeptical and thought that we were actually out to get the subculture, which is not what the film's about at all. It's just it's just a stepping off point. In, in all the research that I did just on that, like, which are like, huge, huge amounts, hours and weeks, months and months of research that I did, I never once saw anything um, between feeders and gainers other than affection. I mean, there was some stuff going on, like all the measuring, and the, that I sort of went, oh, guys, like it's not and for there me. Are, there but, are but I never, it, there was, yeah, yeah, but that's the same yeah. I have tools. Yeah, exactly. At the hotel. That's right the <laughs> But, uh, no, there, that was a joke. <laughs> I never saw anything but affection, and that was what was so endearing. I mean, I just, that's, that, that was the dichotomy. Like, I judged this so harshly, but then I'm watching these people love each other, and I'm like, and there are some great scenes that have been deleted that will be on the DVD that are great because they're um, Michael reading poetry and painting Deidre's nails and there are these beautiful intimate moments which is actually what our research was made up of. Those are the things that we found. Yeah, feeding was part of it, but that was more of like the worshipping ritual. It had nothing, the, the subversive elements, the second half of the film, that's entirely made up of just, you know, people making movies. The, the bits about feeders and gainers that we learned were truly the more loving bits. As you see the juxtaposition of the relationships, the relationship between Michael and Deidre is the coveted one in the beginning of my book. You know, I want to be a part of that where somebody's coming home and bringing me treats and telling me they love me, where instead of coming home and, you know, no one's ever, no me. woman has ever brought me six burgers. It's six burgers, babe. Any Yeah, but. All right, this is kind of minor, but are we supposed to believe that he's been kind of feeding his mother to all these women one by the other? No. Ooh. Okay. That's interesting. Because that was what that I was saying. Maybe, maybe, maybe we should do another cut. <laughs> I haven't had that one yet. No. We usually kind of get... No, 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 no. His mother is... And, <coughs> and his mother's long gone. And... Um, he was really been some, there's been some great it. reviews. What was that arrow in the head? Was it if I read it, if I see another psycho film and the mother's involved? Mm -hmm. oh. and, no, but, but she, this was actually a piss take on that. Because, I mean, you, yeah, yeah, you know, it was. it was like 
Brett was like, let's do it. The writer's like, let's not do it. And then Alex was like, well, let's do it, but let's take the piss out of the fact that right. people do say, oh, it's the mother. And she's like, well, it's not the mother, but it is the mother, but it's not the mother. I'm actually conscious of what I'm doing. Right. So that was Alex's thing. But no. <laughs> no eating of mummy. Yes. I thought that there were a lot of elements of sort of very, very, very black humor in the film. Oh, absolutely. Were those intentional? Absolutely. Welcome to Australia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Australia is all about black. As soon as something gets too serious, it's like, ooh. It's, it's really interesting, black. actually, because I've never seen it with an audience, right? And um, hearing where you guys were laughing, I was like, oh. And, oh, and a lot of them were things I was going, we can't put that in. We're just like, we can't do it. And, they won't get it. They won't, no, not that they won't get it. No, just that it won't be funny. It'll be inappropriate. <laughs> it will be in more trouble than we already are going to be in. So all my life I found myself in cinemas watching films and going, <laughs> You know, and, and so I think there's a lot of that. Things that we think as filmmakers are funny. And why things, I mean, comedy was born from tragedy, right? And... Like I'm always laughing and going, oh, that's really bad. I shouldn't be laughing. And we all are, you know. And so I think there's there, some of them were kind of experimenting as well. Yeah. But Gabby, like I said, she's a comedic actress, so a lot of those laughs come from her and their interaction and playing off of each other. And they worked so well together. It was a really strong point of the film. Yes, yeah, so we came very close. Anyone else over there? I thought I saw him. Yes. Yes. Really good. What was with the spin jump? Oh. Did you like that? That was my stuff. You did it, I have to say. What was with it? You didn't like it? Yeah. Well, he had to get out of there. There was no other way out of the room. He actually is part machine. <laughs> no. I like what you have to say, though, because as a producer, he came, because that wasn't in the script. But when we got the location, there was no way out of the room for the chase. Except for the thing. And he like and Brett come to me, right? and I'm like, the have you lost your mind? Have we got a week of shooting? I said, if I lose him, Brett and I, it's over. Brett and I are like, how are we going to solve this? <laughs> He's got to get out, and he can't go through the balcony, and there's all the film gear here anyway. And I looked at Brett, and I said, dude, I'll just jump off. <laughs> and he goes, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And we lean over, and it was really high. It was, it was really probably about high. as high as the roof. <laughs> it was high. Definitely as high as those gray tiles. It was as high as the roof now. Mm, it, was it was high. It was scary. It was high, and we looked over, and we looked at each other, and went, "For sure, that's a really good idea." And Mel came, and we and, and I said, "I don't have any money for a stunt guy, and I can't lose the actor. Forget it." Yeah, and we said, "Don't worry, it'll be okay." Uh -huh. And he just looks at me in the Alex way. He's like, so, um, and so we got you know safety in, and there was there was the appropriate safety gear. But he did do the stunt himself, and I stood at the bottom and bit all my nails off and said, "If you get hurt, I'm going to kill you when you land." <laughs> <laughs>